Okay, so good to be back.、Uh, in today's lesson, we're going to look at for loops,、uh, combining them with what we call the range function. So in our previous lesson, if you if you guys remember, we looked at the third argument that we can pass into the range function, right? So today we're going to focus on combining the for loop and the range function. But before we look at that. Um, I want to show you something so that you can appreciate the importance of the range function. All right, so over here on line one, I have a list of items. This list of items is what we call an iterable in Python. So,、um, what what is this iterable that you're talking about? Okay, so an iterable is a collection of items, which when I loop over its items. It gives me back the individual items, right? So let me show you what I'm talking about, right? So let's say I'm using a for loop, right, to iterate over the items. So I will say for, and then I can put in a variable here. I can use an x, an i, a y, whatever variable you want to use, and then I'll use in items, right? And then down here, I want to print these items, so I can say. The x, right? So if I save and run, so this tells me that this is an iterable because it allows looping to be done over each element, and then it gives me back the individual element. So right now I've been given back the bread, the rice, the meat, and the banana, right? As you guys can see, these are individual elements of this particular list, right? So you you can actually appreciate if I break this. Let's say I just iterate. One time, if I loop over it one time, and then it's going to break out of this loop. So if I save and run, you will see the bread up here because it looped over this first element, and then it broke out of this loop. Right. So this is what is happening. So this is what we call an iterable.、Um, a string can also be an iterable.、Uh, let's say my name、um, is equals to Saxon. Right, so let me let me use the name here. I can also iterate over this name, save and run. You see now, I get back my my S A D S O N individual, you know, letters of this string. Okay, so a string is also an iterable,、uh, as you guys can see over here. All right, so let's say I want to do something. I want to repeat a block of code、um, a given number of times. So let's say I want to, you know. Repeat three、uh, times ten,、um, maybe six times. So I can use this string to do that. You know, because、um, if I run this, you see there is a thirty, 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 six times, right? One, two, three, four, five, six times. So this allows me to, you know, to repeat a block of code a given number of times. But as you guys can see, let's say I wanted to repeat this a hundred times. So it means I either have to have a hundred elements in this list, or I have to make a string with hundred characters, and this might not be so much convenient, right? So that's where we need to use the range function. So now, instead of using these two as you know、uh, to loop over or to repeat a block of code, I'll simply have to put in range, and then and I can pass in. The number of times that I want this code to repeat. So if I want it to repeat two times, save and run. You see now it repeats two times, thirty thirty. If I want it to repeat it ten times, then it goes ten times. So this is how efficient the ring function is all about. All right. So as you can see, you start now to appreciate how important this ring function is. All right. So、uh, let's go and try and answer the question that follows.、All、right. So the question is. Fill in the blanks to create a for loop that prints only even values in the range. So let's say I want to print even values, so I can use for i in range zero to twenty, and then I'll have to I have an interval of two. So from zero, it's going to go to two, two to four, four to six, and then I can print an i here, and then we can check it out, and that's the correct answer. So if we are to go back. Uh, you realize that the start is zero, the end is twenty, and 
um, the step is going to be a 2. So now instead of printing 3 by 10, I'll print the X. So if I save and run, you see down here, it gives me 0, 2 for up to 18. Okay, so this gives me even values back. So let's say I wanted um, odd numbers back. So what should I do? In actual effect, I should just change this and start on 1. or we'll start at 1. So it's going to go 1, 3, 5, 7, 9. So if I save and run this, you will see down here, it goes like 1, 3, 5, 7, 9. Okay, so uh, down with today's lesson. Um, in, in our next lesson, we're going to start on what we call list slices. So I want to thank you for your time. I hope to see you in our next video. For now, I'm out. Bye-bye. Mm.